we're getting this into standard form, which I think it uses the term vertex form again. Okay, remember that first of all, this would equal y. I would group these together. I would take out the x, changing the sign on both of them. And then I leave that space, take the four, divide it by two, square it, two squared is four. Add the four here, subtract the four here, but multiply by the negative one first, which means I am now adding four. So I'd get y equals negative x plus 2 squared plus 12. So, <laughs> so you're going to get questions that will just say put in standard form, and that's your answer. You're going to get questions, like if you got a question from here that might say find the vertex. And you can choose if you want to put in standard form or just use negative b over 2a because that's a lot faster if that's all you're finding, okay? I'm sorry. Axis of symmetry on this one. X equals negative 2. Good. If I wanted the vertex, it would be what? Negative 2, 12. Okay. Those are the things you want to be able to identify. Um, and then obviously graph it if you need to. So I would say I would start with my vertex, which is negative 2, 12. I know because it's negative, it points down. From there, if I look at my multiple choice, that might be enough to get you what, what your graph is. If it's a little bit different, then you can always plot one point and find out what it is. But at least it should narrow it down. All right. Then... 2 was 1 and 1 was 2, so the other one was complete the squared 2x squared plus 3x plus 2. So again, vertex form is the word that it uses. We group these together. We take out the 2. We take the 3 over 2, divide it by 2 or multiply by a half. That's 3 fourths. Square it. You should get 9 sixteenths. We add that in here. We normally subtract it from here, but you got to multiply by 2 first. So this goes in eight times. This is minus nine eighths. So I'd get two factor by square rooting. Square rooting, take the sign from the middle, put it in the parentheses and square it. And then two would be 16 over eight minus nine over eight, which is seven eighths, positive seven eighths. So my vertex, negative three fourths, seven eighths. Axis of symmetry, x equals negative three-fourths. I don't know if I'm going to be able to focus the next couple of days. <clears throat> the other thing you're going to get asked is like um, intercepts. So if I wanted to know the x, well, first let's do the y, right? The y is the easy one. What's the y intercept on this? Zero, two. How do I find the x intercepts? Good. Set it equal to zero. If it's factorable, I would do that first, but there are not factors of positive four that sum to three. So this is where you had to use the quadratic equation. So A, you're going to have to do that a couple of times tomorrow. A is two, B is three, C is two, negative B plus and minus the square root of B squared, minus four times A times C, all over two times A. And this time nine minus, this is 16. You got a negative underneath your square root. What does that mean for intercepts? They don't exist. Good. So there would be no x-intercepts here. So if it asks for, remember, if it asks for zeros, it's all of them. I would include i's. If it asks for x-intercepts, it's only the real numbers. So there's no i's on there, okay? Or if it asks for real zeros, same thing, only the real numbers. We wouldn't include i's. You're gonna know, you're gonna need to do the possibles in order to get to the zeros on some. No, I mean you're gonna you're gonna want to like the ones that we did graphing yesterday, but it's not like a blank where you're gonna get credit for listing. Yeah, you can include square roots, just not i's. Yep. Same thing, yeah, all those are zeros. And if the question says zeros, you would list them, like zeros would be two, three, negative four, like that. But if it said intercepts, it's zero, it's two, zero, three, zero, negative four, zero. So uh, when I open up the, um, the review, I'll add those on, because on the review, I think I wrote zeros as the answers, yeah. Are any questions gonna be like X minus two? Yes but it's multiple choice, so you'll know. Yeah, it's not the wording on it. So it'll say like given x minus one is a root of whatever, find all the factors. 
And that's where you would put one on the outside. You would do synthetic division, which you get a zero. And then you take what's here and you either factor, use the quadratic, and then you put them all behind the X. So it'd be X minus one, X minus whatever, X minus whatever. Kira. So it's almost like Yes. So it's 15 multiple choice. And then the graphing is two questions, but those are worth, it's 15 points and, and 10 points. So that's worth 25 points. So if it says it like this, if that's your factor, then you do the opposite of what's on the outside. So I put a positive one here. If it says X equals negative one, then I put negative one. So if it's behind the X minus. And then overall, people did good on like the fourth one. The vertex, so the, notice number three, it didn't say use the, it, you didn't say had, it ha, didn't have to be in standard form. You're gonna get something like that where you can just find the vertex. I would say overall, there wasn't a ton of like one thing missed. For four common mistakes, we're not squaring it. I'm trying to think of what else. It feels like I graded these so long ago, I don't remember what you did wrong. Yeah, a lot of it was that you forgot the squared on the equation. Any other questions on the quiz?
So I want to type it in. This is 3x to the third minus 19x squared minus 3x plus 3. Graph it. Oh, my zoom is all off. It would have started here. So when you come in tomorrow, I'm having you reset your calculators. I'm going to show you how we'll do it today just so you can practice it. But you're going to reset it. And when you reset it, it will always start with negative 10 to 10. So you, that square will be set. Okay, so now I'm here, right? So if I look at this graph, there's three zeros. None of them are whole numbers, which is what it's going to be like. I've got to find the one that matches my possibles. Because I only have one fraction here, I know it should be relatively easy to catch that 0.333, but let's say it was one third and two thirds. Now I'm looking for, is it landing on 0.3 repeated or is it landing on 0.6 repeated? So if you want to divide out your fractions before you graph it to know exactly what decimal you're looking for, you can, totally can. So I'm gonna then trace. So I go second, trace, and I go to zero. And I'm gonna go left of the first one, and then I'm gonna go right of that first one and hit enter. And it brings me to 0.46, which is not one of my possibles. I might write that down though, because when I get to the end and I have my answers from the quadratic, you can plug those in the calculator and see if it gives you 0.46. Then I would go second trace, go back to the zero again. And that's my 0.3 repeated. So I know that positive one third is the possible that works. I would advise if you have the extra 10 seconds and you're comfortable with it, get that last zero. Which is 6.46 because now I can, when I check my quadratic, so when my other answers, which are 3 plus 2 root 3 and 3 minus 2 root 3, I can actually plug that into the calculator and I should get 0.46 and I should get 6.46 and you, you do like when you that's that's how I checked the answer when I did the key check to make sure that they match up and then you know you have the right ones. So after I found the one third from the graph, the one third went to the outside of my synthetic division, brought down the three, multiplied it all the way out. The remainder should be zero. If it's not, you did something wrong. And then I took what's left, this gets the x, this gets the x squared. You will always be able to do quadratic because you went from a third to down to a quadratic. It's not gonna be factorable because then they would already be on your possibles and it's not gonna be that way. Well, on these, on the graphs, you're gonna get a third is the highest when you're graphing it, like using the graphing utility and this kind of stuff because you only need to find one possible root. But on the test itself, it could be higher, yeah. Yeah. What? How are you going to do that without the calculator? How? You tested all the possibles. You won't finish your test. Yeah. It's always going to be a fraction, and there's going to be more than one. So, like, this one only had one fraction option. Not tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, it, is it physically possible?